Shadows are some of the trickier things to render when you're drawing out or sketching objects. And I'm going to show you how to reverse engineer and then actually calculate out your shadows when you're sketching and rendering. My name is Eric Strebel. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. I hope that you like, enjoy, and become a subscriber. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up and then you hit the bell. Hit the bell again so you get the little parentheses around it. That way you'll be notified every time I have a new video. Don't forget to check out the design and making merch just below the video. All kinds of stuff, t-shirts, hoodies, and other miscellaneous fun things you might like. I've created a simple shadow caster with two straws, a couple of AA batteries, and an old Maglite spare bulb, very analog, to show you how we illustrate calculating shadows. So let's take a look at a basic shadow and how we can go about calculating that shadow for a rendering or a sketch that we're doing. All right. So I think it's worth noting here that there's some perspective involved and we want to follow that perspective. You'll notice this cube, of course, is three point perspective and the sides of that cube that go off to a vanishing point off here to the right. The shadow that is cast also goes to that same vanishing point here. So we're gonna follow that perspective in that sense from those top edges that are cast on that cube. Things will become a little bit more clear, but I just wanna point that out. All right, so let's stop right about here and we're gonna kind of reverse engineer a shadow. I've drawn in four legs from this cube. So if this was not a cube and we just had four sticks sticking out of the ground and we have a light and in this case uh, there's some error here where it's an analog thing it's uh, not an exact point but we draw a line from that light at the top down to our ground plane at the very bottom that the cube is actually sitting on this same ground plane we can do some basic calculations here we can draw a line from the very bottom of this light pole or this shadow caster through the bottom of the sticks. And this is how you can begin to calculate your shadows. So you'll see these yellow lines here go through the bottom of the sticks, intersecting at the bottom of those purple lines which are basically the sticks sticking out of the ground that represent the four corners of this cube all right so now let's calculate the light rays that are emanating from our light source or the top of the pole and we're going to have those light rays shine down and intersect the top of those sticks and stop where they intersect the yellow lines and those lines are drawn in blue and you can see that where those lines intersect happen to be where the shadow falls on the ground plane and this is how we can calculate the shadows of those sticks and I'm going to draw the shadows in red if those were just sticks on the ground that were being that are casting uh, a shadow and let's remove now the light source and the lines at the bottom and take a look at those shadows we can remove the drawing our underlay and we can take a look at our image here so we have a light uh, standing on our pole and four sticks sticking out of the ground and they are casting shadows on the ground and those are the red lines and that's what the shadows would be like from those four sticks. Let's come in and draw the top of the box. So we could take 
basically some other sticks and lay them on top of the four sticks that are sticking out of the ground. And these sticks will create our cube that we are working from. So this gives us our cube in three point perspective. Let's go ahead and uh, draw in the other back side of the cube here. Let's remove those four sticks for right now. And then that gives us the shadow lines that we created from those four corners on the box. Let's just go ahead and connect those to finish creating our shadow that would be cast on the ground. All right, so let's remove those red lines since we don't need those anymore. And let's remove the back part of the shadow that would be hidden by the cube that we can't see either. And then that leaves us the shadow. So we're gonna color that in really quick here so we can get a better idea of the actual shadow that's on the ground. And so that gives you the shadow. Let's put that on a white background so we can see that a little bit clearer. And that's how you calculate a shadow for a simple cube. You can basically use the same technique for any object. Let's do it for the sphere that we have in the back here. I'm just going to draw a stick through the middle of this sphere. I need to draw it in perspective, so I need to make sure that that is going to the vanishing point there at the bottom of the page. And we're just going to, I'm just going to illustrate this by using a simple stick to get you in the ballpark for a sphere. You could easily draw a box around that sphere, um, but we're going to use the same technique. We'll draw our shadow cast light uh, ray from the top of the light in blue and the ground plane shadow at the bottom where they intersect the stick and meet in the back is going to be the edge of our ellipse that is cast by this sphere. And I'm going to draw that out in red. And that will give you an easy way to calculate the shadow even for a sphere. So let's do this for something a little more complex than a cube. And we'll do this on a cylinder. And we're going to start this process by doing what we already know, and that is calculating the shadow for a box. So we're going to draw a box around this cylinder to help us determine where the shadow is going to fall on the ground. So I've drawn this simple wireframe of a box in red, and I'm going to quickly go through what I went through before. Uh, ground plane shadow lines in yellow, my light rays in blue, where these lines intersect on the ground is going to give me a box that was basically cast by the top surface of the red box that I have drawn in here. And so I know that my shadow will have to fall somewhere inside of this box. I'm going to quickly cross divide the box at the top, cross divide the box at the ground plane. And I know that there's an ellipse in the top box. That ellipse has to hold true for the ground plane as well. I draw it in here in white so that you can see it. I can connect my tangent lines to create that shadow on the ground. Let's go ahead and remove the construction lines and take away uh, the stuff that we don't need. I'm going to add in in a dark gray the outline of this cylinder for the top of the cylinder, the sides, and I'm going to basically draw in this uh, cylinder. So in a second here, we're going to remove the underlaying photo so that you can see the lines that are left over that we use to calculate our shadow width. So let's go ahead and remove the part of the oval that would be hidden 
by the actual cylinder because we don't need that we couldn't see it and so what we're going to be left with is the outline of the shadow that is being cast on the ground by this cylinder so you can basically calculate the shadow of any object by drawing a box around that object in perspective to help you calculate the shadows of pretty much anything that you're drawing. Practice is required, of course. Good luck. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. You can do that by clicking on the icon in the bottom right of the video or below the video. Give it a thumbs up and follow the channel there as well. You want to know about upcoming design content and projects that I'm working on? Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and my favorite Google Plus links below. Rock on. Click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that I have that you might enjoy.